guys. Thanks for tuning in. Paul here at Paul Phillips Fix. Uh, we're going to be doing an oil pressure sensor on an 08 Impala. Uh, before I get into that, I just wanted to mention to you guys, in the video description, I'm going to be putting a link for tools and supplies I use. Uh, I found the best prices I could, so at no extra cost to you, if you purchase from there, you would help to be supporting the channel. There are a lot of expenses doing a YouTube channel. The tools, the equipment, the lighting, the microphones, the cameras, the editing equipment, and a ton of work. Uh, editing these uh, videos is very time consuming. Excuse my audio today and the Yappy Crow, but I'm just using my Hero Sessions. It's a small camera. It's going to be hard to get uh, pictures in here. So let me set my light up and see if I can find out the best way to attack this. Oh! Before I start, uh, some people were complaining that I uh, address things for people who are experienced with auto mechanics, so I wanted to give some information to the novice, like where to jack the car, how to jack it and be safe, so I'm going to do that before I start. If you're experienced, just fast forward through that, so we're going to do that first. Okay guys, one of the first places you can jack the car is called the subframe. It's an aluminum subframe on the Chevy Impala that's in the front of the car. So we're going under from the front. I'm going to show you the subframe. This is your subframe right here, all this aluminum. You can jack here, anywhere in this aluminum. But on this, I went on the pinch wells because I want to be working in the front here. I don't want the jack stands in my way, so I jack the car further back here. Do not jack on the uh, floor of the car. Your jack will go right through it. And do not jack on the uh, rocker panel. You got to go further in a little bit. Here is a pinch weld. It's the seam of the car where it meets. You can jack on there and put your jack stand there. Do not jack over here. That's not a good idea. So get on the pinch weld and jack there. And always, no matter what you're doing, how quick it is, always put jack stands under a car. I don't care what kind of jack you're using. Do not trust them. And make sure you get good jack stands. I'm going to put a link for these as well. These are Pro Lift. I love these jack stands. They have a safety lock that you put in there. So even if the pole jumped, the, the jack stand still would not come down. So those are really good jack stands. I hope I'll remember to put the link in the video description. So what I have to figure out now, the uh, oil pressure sensor is down near the oil filter housing. I don't know if I have to remove this exhaust heat shield first. I'm going to get underneath and see where the exhaust, where the uh, oil pressure sensor is and see if I can get to it. The tool you're going to need to replace the oil pressure sensor is a uh, 1 and 1 16th socket. This is a special sensor socket. It's all hollow inside. Some of the 1 and 6, 1 and 1 16th uh, deep wall sockets are not open that deep in there. They'll just have like that much open to one and one sixteenth, then it's smaller inside. So you're probably better off getting one of these sensor sockets. I'll see if I can put a link for that in the video as well. They're not expensive, like 11 or 12 bucks or something like that, 14 bucks. So they're good to have around. A lot of sensors are that size. So, all right, let me get under there and see where we're gonna attack this. Oh, just one more safety concern. If you're working on a blacktop driveway in the summer, these jack stands can sink in there, or if you had oil spilt there. So put wood. I have real heavy matted, uh, tight matted carpet under these, and it's cooler today. I usually put heavy plywood under there, but uh, I have my other car up in the air. All of my blocks of plywood are used up, so. I'm making do with that rug for right now, but be careful of the jack stand sinking in the driveway, all right?
Early this morning, I, prayed, I sprayed some uh, acetone and transmission mix. I make my own uh, <clears throat> penetrating oil, transmi automatic transmission fluid, and acetone and a 50-50 blend works excellent. I soaked this bolt, these two over here, and there's one more down here. I think that's it. There may be another one down there. I'll have to look. I think it's still hot. I had to drop Wendy off at work. Now it's cooled down. One. That's it. One, two, three, four bolts, it looks like. So I'm going to have to take that heat shield off and see if I can get in there then. All right. That's 10 millimeter fasteners. You might want to hit them with penetrating oil. Let them soak for a while so you don't snap them off. Take it easy on them. Crack them a little bit. Move them. Don't go wrenching it like crazy and snap them off all right the tool i'm going to be using is a husky reactionless impact ratchet uh these are great the impact helps to break the fastener free without snapping it off i believe there is a link for this tool in the uh video description excellent ratchet i r highly recommend it you, got, you can get them at home depot too so I got the top one out with that reactionless ratchet, the Husky. It's a little tight in there, so I'm going to see if I can get it with this. This is a uh, 1119A 3H drive mini wobble air ratchet. It's from Onyx Astro Pneumatic. Excellent, absolutely excellent tool line. Uh, I will add this to the item description, the uh, video link in the description section. This Astro Company is fantastic. It's uh, Astro Pneumatic, and their line of tools are Onyx. I changed my mind. I didn't really try to lie, but I did lie. I'm going to go back to the uh, Husky Impact one. I'm just putting a long extension on here. I just got to find my socket. Sometimes a longer reach is better. Yeah, I get through nooks and crannies. That moved a little bit. I'm gonna have to I wanna snap it. And of course the socket disappears down in the netherworld. Trying to do this without having to remove that uh, shield on the bottom of the car. Now I'm going to the little guy. I'm going to be putting some copper never seize on those bolts before I put them back in there. If I ever have to take this off again, I don't want them to be frozen in there. All right, that's a little better. Where the hell is it? Well, that's on a shitty angle. How would he get in there with a long ratchet, with a long extension? I thought it was facing upward. Is that it sideways down there? I think that's the oil sensor right down there. That is sideways down there. I think that's the oil sensor right down there. right here 10 millimeter fastener right here try to get over on this side we're gonna have to take this plastic underbelly cover off we're going over towards the wheel now there's a little 7 mil fastener right here 
right there you see the seven mil fastener and then one of those little christmas tree uh or one or two of those little christmas not christmas tree pop in uh body rivets so you try to get a small screwdriver and just pry the center out and then you can uh pull out those plastic fasteners okay you're gonna have to do that to get that underbelly pan off a little bit of a pain in the ass but it'll make it easier to get to things so I'm gonna just loosen them up now Gotta have your little magnetic tray for your fasteners. Makes it a lot easier. And dropping them all over the place. I think this has to come out, this little seven mil. Pretty long. Don't get old, guys. It sucks. Oh, I'm sorry, there's a third 10 millimeter in the middle. I missed that. I wonder why that wasn't moving. I'm gonna see if I gotta take those Christmas trees, those uh, plastic retainers out, I think I do. Watch your eyes down here too, which if you can wear safety glasses. I gotta get prescription safety glasses. See what else is holding it. Oh, there's more. Let me show you where these are. Up in this recess here. There's more of those plastic fasteners. I think you got to turn that with a screwdriver and pop it out. All right, I'm going to work on those now. I'm not going to film this because I'm not going to get any good footage of this, guys. I'm going to be trying to get those out. Let me go get some screwdrivers. I dicked around with these for a ridiculous amount of time. The ones up in the recess there, I just kept spinning and spinning them. The one stripped out. I just took a Phillips screwdriver and hammered it through and knocked the center right out. That's it. I don't have time to fuck around with this junk. They do this shit so you can't take things apart. That's the only reason. Uh, there's another two of those small fasteners. I forget what size they were. Seven mil, I think. There's two more of them on the side. Sorry, I thought there was only one. One more on each side. I'll figure out something. Either I'll go buy a replacement panel uh, clips. I thought there was only one of these on each side. This too. I hate the way these fucking engineers do shit. It's so stupid. Could have just done it with 10 millimeter fasteners like the other one. Simple, or even these little guys. Body clips and steel screws, you know? I guess the plastic is the cheapest of the fastener that they can get, you know? That's all it is with them. It's always about the money. All right, now these other ones are going to have to pop out that are on to the uh, fender well liner. I don't know if I showed you the tools I brought out. But these are handy to have. These little body clip tools. You can get right under the pin and pull it out. The center pin. Sometimes. 
Yay, it worked. Yay. There's a little recess on the side where you're sometimes able to get a start on it. I can't stand these things. I hate them. I think they're junk. Complete fucking junk. If your car hasn't been in the front end collision, you're going to have a couple of more of them up in the front, holding them to the bumper cover. Just remove them. And then slide it out. I'm going to have to buy a set of body panel clips. There was a bunch missing on here that I'm going to replace. Oh, what is this? Separate piece here. What is that? Extras? It's fucking loose in there. All right, let's see if we can get to business here. They did not put retarded clips on here. No, they didn't, thank God. Sometimes they put these fucking crazy clips with these locks on them that are insane. All right, guys. It's right by the oil filter on the housing. I can't really get a good shot of that. I will try. Hold on. Let me get the grease out of my face. Guys, I got on there with a long extension. I don't know if you can even see it down here. This is my extension over here. I'm running all the way across over to the top of the oil filter housing. And that's your oil pressure sensor there. So I could probably get it from the top or the bottom with my ratchet. I'll have to see which is best. I have to remove my air horns on the top probably to get there. I've got air horns I put in there. Because I got assholes around me that drive like lunatics. I hate people that blow their horns. Believe me, I'm not a horn blower. But if I do blow it, for a reason, I want to be heard. So, when I'm on my motorcycle, I swear to God, they're trying to kill me sometimes, these bastards. Especially these idiots in their SUVs. Ridiculous, man. Ridiculous, I tell you. Ridiculous. Just take your, well, your engine cover, you might need it, not need it out of the way. So here I am from the top. Let me show you. It's a much better view from the top. I guess I needed to take that damn cover off just to get that fucking plug off of there. See where my extension is down there? It's running all the way over to the uh, oil sensor. Gonna be fun threading that new one in there. Oh, I can guide it on. All right, guys. I can't film this. You see where it is. That's what you gotta do to replace your oil sensor on an 08 Chevy Impala. Thanks for watching. Please give it a like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. And take good care of your cars. It'll take good care of you. This thing has got over 170,000 miles on it. You'd figure it had real bad oil leaks, but it doesn't. That's just from all that mileage. So, well, you're probably going to lose a little bit of oil when you pull this off. So you might want to get a pan under there. Try to position my pan underneath here. If you can't get it with the pan, there's always cat litter, right? Damn, it's going to rain like a son of a bitch. That's 
ratchet on there tight. I got to get my long handle ratchet on there. Once you break it free, it comes right out. Oh, one last thing. I'm fucking bipolar, man. I got an excuse. What's your problem? Well, guys, I hope that was useful information to you guys. I wish I could have got better footage of that. But if you're in here, you know where the position is now. It's hard to film in there. So, but I tried to help. Uh, I can tell you how many inches long my extension is. Let me get my tape measure and measure this because this was the perfect length. Hold on. Let's go get the tape measure. Off to the dungeon. I never have too many tools, guys. I'm always adding to my tool collection. I got a shit ton of tools and I had a hard time doing this little stupid bullshit job with these clips. So... I knew it was going to rain. I just wanted to get done. I can put that under panel back on another day. I'll just drive it up on some ramps. I don't even have to go through the hassle of jacking a car up. I'll just drive it up a set of ramps and throw them on. Uh, oh, yeah. So it 
is a 15 inch extension so a 15 inch extension with that deep wall sensor tool and your golden 3 8 drive all right guys thanks again for watching please support our channel i would greatly appreciate it uh, i know this car looks like it has massive oil leaks but it's got small oil leak but it's got over 170,000 miles on it. Doesn't look bad for a car that's got 170,000 miles on it. I had one issue where it was running rich. I was getting a rich condition. I had put new injectors in it the other year, year and a half ago or something, and uh, crap, right out of the box. Leaky injector. So just yesterday, I finished a video where I put new injectors in. This time, I went with original equipment injectors i didn't want to have any more bullshit problems with uh reman stuff failing on me i had a cv axle that i installed not just a regular cv axle a heavy duty cardone cv axle i did both axles on here both wheel hubs uh sway bar sway bar links sway bar links in the back uh brand new springs you can see videos on all this stuff you look them up on my channel uh first drive I go for with the new parts less than 50 miles the CV axle blows apart the boot just shreds up <laughs> amazing so they covered it under warranty but still I had to do all the labor thank God I didn't have to go to a garage I would have been paying double labor you know so I think it's it's good to be able to do your own work on your cars guys and you know what's getting done and you know what parts are getting put in you know especially today with the uh, quality control and stuff i'm putting good quality stuff in and i'm still having problems here and there so i don't know i don't trust any of these garages i know they put the cheapest shit that they can get out of the warehouse and they charge you five times what it goes for so i was in this field i hated it they wanted me to rob people i wasn't going to do that i lost jobs over that I told the boss, I said, I'll tell him you're trying to rob him. You ain't going to do that. I said, watch me. I went right out and told him, you know, one guy had a bad uh, ground cable. They wanted me to sell him a new alternator, a new battery, and a ground cable. I laughed. I thought he was kidding. He goes, I told you what to tell him. I said, the only thing wrong with the car is it needs a ground cable. He goes, I told you what to tell him. I said, I'm not going to do that. He goes, yes, you are. You're going to do what the fuck I tell you to do. I said, no, I'm not. As a matter of fact, I'm going to go tell this guy you're trying to get me to rob him. He was actually a Catholic priest. That was even funnier, you know. So I told him that was that job and that was that it for, for me in that field. You know, I'm not going to do that, man. They're always trying to upsell people and rip people off. It's crazy, man. Do your own work, guys. Do your own work. It's safer too. These idiots don't even know how to put wheels on right, man. They don't know how to follow manufacturer torque spec on wheels. You know? Crazy. Now, I'm rambling. I'm going to put the baby crying sound on. Wow, wow, wow. The world's so cruel and unfair. Oh, life is so fucked up. There's so many mean people out there. Oh. Thank God I meet good people doing good things, man, because sometimes it's hard to stay optimistic, and I like to be optimistic, believe it or not. Oh, that's it. I'm shutting up. See ya. Out. Next one. We'll be back. Bye-bye.